Linear equations are solved in different ways. It is similar with this next video as we are going to discuss the different methods to determine the roots of nonlinear equations. Welcome to Numerical Solutions to CE Problems. There are two general methods in solving nonlinear equations. One is known as bracketing method, which utilizes a range where the root is included and each iteration or step brings one closer to the root. The second method is what is called as open method. This method starts with a guess where each iteration will be using a different guess point. Roots of nonlinear equations can be computed graphically by simply drawing the curve, but this will be tedious to start with and inaccurate unless you are going to use a graphical calculator. Let's look into incremental method. This analysis is also called brute force method for its simplicity of procedure. The only condition assumed in this method is the nonlinear equation will be passing through the x-axis. The procedure starts by identifying the starting value of x and determining the interval to be used. Next is to plug in the chosen x values into the equation and tabulate results according to the intervals used. The key here is to locate the change of signs of the function x. In order to be more accurate, work with smaller intervals to reveal the exact values in decimal places and this will be repeated according to the desirable place value. This is the first example. We are to determine x from the formula function of x is equal to 4x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Let's start by choosing a value. In this case, we're going to have negative 10 and an increment of 2. By plugging in negative 10 into the formula, we arrive at function of x as negative 4319. Then taking an interval of 2, we compute for the function of x using x is equal to negative 8, and plugging x, we get the function of x as negative 2,255. So we can say that increasing the value of x leads us to the change in sign of f of x. Now, if we consider taking negative 6 as x, we get the value of negative 983. Take another increment higher than the previous. Negative 4 as the value of x gives us negative 311. Note that the value is still negative, so we move on to the other increment. Now using negative 2 as the value of x gives us negative 47, which is nearer to 0 or the change of sign or positive value. Placing x as 0 gives the value of positive 1. Hence, we can focus our increment search between negative 2 and 0. This time, focusing on intervals of point 40, we work between negative 2 and 0, where we found the function of x values earlier. Starting with 1.6, the function of x shows negative 26.264. Move another notch or 0 0.4 from negative 1.6, thus using x of negative 1.2, the function of x is solved as negative 12.632. Take another 0.4 interval, bringing the value of x to negative 0.80, the function of x is solved as negative 4.568. Then by taking another increment, use x as negative 0.40, the function of x turns out to be negative 0.536. At this point, we can say that one root of the equation can be taken as negative 0.4. 
but in case we would like to take another subinterval, we should focus on the values between negative 0.4 and 0. Let's continue solving for the root using the second decimal place. So by limiting our values between negative 0.4 and 0, we can choose to get an increment of 0 0.05. Working with negative 0.35 as x, we can compute for function of x as negative 0.239. Take another increment which would give the value of x as negative 0.30. In this computation, we get 0.022, a positive number. We can take the root as negative 0.30 as function of x is close to 0. But you can still continue working between negative 0.35 and negative 0.30 to be more accurate. From the following example, we can draw out some analysis like concluding that incremental search method is not a numeric method, but it can surely define the roots of a nonlinear equation. One of the advantages is that it is like choose and plug the values to use, so it is simple to implement. Also, as long as the chosen value of x is less than the root, one can confidently find the root. However, this method is time-consuming as one needs to locate the accurate value of x, and another setback is the choice of x0 or the starting value of x. It is hard to guess a number to use to start the procedure. Let's solve the next example for the equation given as f of x is equal to x squared cosine x plus 1. This time, the interval is limited to positive 3 to 0, and it is required to have a root in three decimal places. Let's use an increment of 1. By starting with 3, place the x value in the equation and come up with negative 7.9099. By taking an increment of 1, we continue the search by plugging the value of 2 in the equation, giving us negative 0 0.6646. By using x is equal to 1, we arrive at the function of x as 1.5403, again a positive number. Note that there is a change of sign, so we can work on the subintervals at this point. However, if we proceed and check on the value of 0, it shows that the function of x will have 1, which tends to bring about the next root. So focus on the subintervals between 2 and 1. Say that we take the second increment of 0 0.1. From x is equal to 2, we now proceed computing for 1.9, giving us the value of negative 0.1671. Taking the next increment, plug in 1.8 and get the value of f of x as 0 0.2639. There is another change of sign in the result, so we can limit our search between 1.9 and 1.8. Take the third increment as 0 0.01. Whereby, using this interval from 1.9, we would use x is equal to 1.89 and it gives the value of function of x as negative 0 0.1210. The next interval will be with 1.88, giving the function of x as negative 0 0.0755. Moving further with 1.87, the value of the function of x would be taken as negative 0.0307. Then taking another interval, place 1.86 into the equation and function of x turns into a positive 0.0134. We can stop at this point and focus on the third decimal place as required taken between 1.87 and 1.86. Using the last increment as 0 0.001, start from 1.87, 
giving us 1.869 and the function of x turns to be negative 0 0.0263. Another increment of 0.001 from the last value, function of x, when 1.868 is used, gives negative 0.0219. Still a negative, so continue on the next increment. Replacing x with 1.867 yields the value of the equation as negative 0.0174. For x equal to 1.866, the resulting function of x is taken as 0 0.0132 in the negative. Yet another increment. Using 1.865, the function of x will be negative 0 0.0086. With 1.864, the function of x will be negative 0.0042. Solving further, and using 1.863, the resulting function of x is negative 0.0002. If we try to solve further at 1.862, the value of function of x turns out to be 0 0.0046. Thus, we can conclude that the root of the equation between 3 and 0 is 1.863, keeping the required 3 decimals.